I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. You're looking at one of my favorite three top cities in the entire world. La Havana is a gem. Beautiful architecture, incredible culture. It's warm and it's friendly. It's got really everything you could possibly want in a city. Now, a couple of things about the city. First of all, here's El Capitolio, the Capitol building, which is a replica of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. And the city is actually divided into two halves. The half on the forefront of this photo would be known as the old city of Havana. Anything on the far side of El Capitolio is known as the new city of Havana. And they are quite distinct from each other. Now, the new city of Havana is a little bit more crumbling. They say that 80 buildings per year collapse here in Havana due to maintenance. Okay, and it's obviously up to the government to maintain these structures. Some of them don't get the maintenance they need and they do crumble. And I always kind of liked walking through New Havana and, and almost seeing these old colonial buildings crumbling. It's, it's quite a unique thing to see. But, you know, really this city, for people that are coming to visit, they want to go through Old Havana, which is all the UNESCO World Heritage Site, so it does get a lot of funding for the upkeep. And here is where you're going to see some of the most beautiful colonial architecture in the Americas, and definitely in the Caribbean. This place is very, very unique. Much different from anywhere else I've seen in my life. Of course, we have some beautiful courtyards and a great wandering city. A lot of old Havana is pedestrian only, so we can just cruise around through here and not worry about the traffic. And we also have um, in the old city, we have Le Malecon, which is the seawall of Havana. Now, a lot of Cubans don't have money to go out at night and party or, or drink. So what they'll do is they'll get a bottle of rum, they'll come down here to El Malacón in the evening, sit on the banks of the ocean and have a drink. So coming down here, if you want to meet the locals, just walking down El Malacón, chatting to the people is a great way to spend an afternoon or an evening. It's a very artsy place. Everybody in Cuba is a musician. Everybody plays some sort of musical instrument. You're going to see that, especially here along the Malecon. And we have all of the history in Havana. This is a very, very historical city. Now, what you're seeing here is on the far side of this image, you can see the city of Havana. We're on a small bit of land um, that kind of comes around in the bay called Fortaleza El Morro. This is where they protected the city for hundreds of years. This is actually an Italian-built fort, again, on the far side of the city. Now, when you're looking at this photo, imagine that there's a chain going from this fort all the way to the city of Havana. They used, they used to have that to block any boats from entering this city after 9 o'clock p.m. It's a very important thing to remember because every night at 9 o'clock we can come over to Fortaleza El Morro and there's a ceremony called El Cañonazo. Now this was the old symbolic closing of the gates of Havana. So every night at 9 p.m. sharp we're going to come into the old fort which is beautiful in itself absolutely magnificent and they are going to have a whole celebration a little a little sort of uh, parade and they're going to light a canyon to signify the closing of the gates of Havana. Now let's move to some more re recent history here. Uh, we've got a guy if you know a guy named Ernest Hemingway well when he was writing some of his famous books this was his favorite hangout. He first told his wife he was living in Florida he said I'm gonna go down and visit Cuba for you know a couple of months uh, well, you know, soon enough, he moved down here. He was here for years on end. And, you know, he used to come to this place called El Floridita, Florida, which is in central Havana. He went there so much, the bartender set, started to know his tastes, and they created a drink for him, which is, of course, called the Daiquiri. So if you go to El Floridita now, it's a little touristy, but you can sit with a bust of uh, Ernest Hemingway. And, of course, you don't have to drink a Daiquiri. This is home of the Mojito which has become a bit of a trendy drink. You'll see the, the, uh, the mint leaf floating there. That's one of the, the symbols. That's how you know that this is a good mojito because the mint leaves are floating. Now, of course, how can we talk about La Havana without talking about another period of history in this great city? That's when people like Al Capone and, and you know, in the 40s and 50s, when this became a real hangout for the mob. And as a testament to that, we're going to see a lot of the old hotels that they created. Here we're looking at the Capri Hotel where, you know, Capone and his cronies hung out. 
Now, when Fidel Castro invaded and, and they took over the island, they took over the city, they did it quite quickly. And the, all of these mobsters, this used to be where all the great, great casinos, there was a lot happening here. They had to leave very quickly, the mobsters. And what they left behind was generally, um, you know, all of their cars. So these cars have now been running, some of them for 30, 40 years. Okay, now the interior has generally be, been redone, but uh, the interior is exactly the same. And Fidel Castro will actually pay people to upkeep their cars. It's sort of like a living museum here in Havana and all over Cuba. Another testament to history, since that revolution, we're going to see a lot of the old Polish Fiats and some Russian-built cars. Okay, everything is rationed. Gas is rationed on the island, and so there's not very many private cars on the island. Most of them are publicly owned by the government, but quite interesting to see, again, this part of the Cubans' history. The local transport looks something like this. Likely you won't be going on the local transport. This is called a camella or a camel, and this is how the locals get around. Uh, it's very, very stringently reserved for local people. Gas is at a real premium here because they can't import from, you know, who should be their biggest trading partner. So it is a heavily rationed item here in Havana. Now, back to that Al Capone area because, era, because Al Capone was here and, and all of his cronies, they loved the cabarets. And they created the Tropicana Cabaret, still running one of the best cabarets in the entire world. Coming here, seeing these absolutely gorgeous women in these incredible costumes, okay, doing, you know, this, this pretty wonderful show. This still happens nightly in La Havana, and I do urge you to check it out. So there's a short glimpse of Havana. Hope you learned something. Hope that was helpful. I urge you to get down there pretty soon. Stuff is changing. And please do visit me at my website, www.kevinsworldvideotour.com. Thanks for listening.